Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. Building on last week's episode, where I talked about demonstrating your resilience leadership through effective stakeholder meetings. Today, I wanna talk a little bit about framing up a strategy conversation. And I'm gonna use some actual text, some actual content that I used in a recent executive presentation where I was presenting to a CEO and their entire executive team about their new crisis management and business continuity strategy. So to set this, to, to kind of frame this up for you, this was a pretty high stakes conversation. It represented four or five months of work that the team and I had done with our client to put forward a strategy on how this organization, which had never had an enterprise level crisis management approach before, um, really explaining to their executives, here's the strategy that we have put together that we are going to walk through with you for your approval. This strategy included uh, capital and expense investment, it included headcount, it included establishing a corporate crisis management team, uh, it included the necessary resources internally and as, as outside consultants to support that. Um, it was, and then a complete revamp from a maturity effort for their business continuity program, including obtaining software for the first time. So these are all things they had struggled with for a number of years, and this was uh, the final conversation. So I can't show you the slides, but I want to talk, uh, I think more importantly, about just how to frame up a conversation like this when you have 20 minutes to explain a complex strategy to an executive team. So I'm gonna walk through a couple things here that I think are important that I think can help you as you look at doing this in your own organization. So again, to set the stage, uh, this was a presentation to CEO and the top nine or 10 executives uh, from this organization. I had presented to them uh, once before. Um, we had started this effort uh, by conducting a pretty intense tabletop exercise. Um, and I had presented the after action, the key lessons learned from that exercise. And one of those is you don't have a corporate crisis management strategy that is sustainable, documented, well understood or well established. So they knew that pain point. Um, and they'd had a chance to see me uh, speak and interact with them before. So this was not a cold audience. To me, we knew each other in that way, but we had never had a conversation about here's what we're going to do uh, and here's what we're proposing. So um, again, and I only had 20 minutes um, and this is a complicated topic. So I really had to make sure that I was crystal clear in terms of what I was presenting and what my ask was of them in this conversation. And so I'm really just gonna talk through the first few minutes of this presentation to give you a flavor of how you should consider setting up such conversations for you and your team. My first slide after the introduction that happened, uh, and I was introduced by the COO who was our client there, um, my first slide is literally titled, Why Are We Here? And I laid out three things. I am here to provide an overview of our proposed corporate crisis management strategy and plan. I want to provide you with an update on our business continuity efforts. And finally, I wanna capture your input and discuss what our next steps are to put this strategy um, uh, into play with your feedback. I then talked through a very brief amount of background. The very brief background was literally three points, and that was your business plan calls for the need to build these capabilities. Second, you engaged us to build this and help implement and mature your program um, and where we were. And the assessment of where we were is that for the last four or five months, we have been building this strategy. We have been talking with stakeholders across the organization. Um, and after meeting 34 different teams, to get feedback on the strategy and iterate the strategy to make sure it aligned with everything, we are here to ask for your approval. So our ask today of you are three things. We want your candid feedback on our proposed strategy. We wanna hear from you 
to ensure that we have the right leaders involved in the cross-functional work that this requires. And third, we want your support as this work advances. The third thing I did in the, the lead into this was I briefly described what we meant by corporate crisis management and by business continuity. And I had to do this in a very simple way because there was a lot of confusion. So I had one slide, uh, one box said uh, corporate crisis management, what it is and examples. Business continuity, what it is and examples. And here's how I explained that. Corporate crisis management are your strategies and processes that define how your company collaborates across the whole organization to prepare for, respond to, and recover from harmful incidents. Examples of this would be a regional natural disaster. It could be something proactive, like you have a major sporting event like the Super Bowl uh, here in your city. Um, but it also could include uh, corporate-wide crises, uh, I'm sorry, crisis exercises, like the one that we had run for you several months ago. When we talk about business continuity, we're talking about a specific type of planning, strategies and processes that build the capacity for your organization to continue to operate and understand the impacts across the organization during a disruption. And examples are business continuity plans, and I gave them a specific example. Um, it includes business impact analyses. This is how we capture the cascading impact of a disruption, how we capture the impacts of a disruption, and how we capture dependencies for what your critical processes and facilities require. And then I gave them an example of an incident that they were all familiar with that involved the invocation of some relocation procedures, but they weren't really, they didn't really have a business continuity plan. They just had some procedures on doing something. That was my lead in. I didn't dally on these slides. I went through them relatively quickly. I paused as appropriate to gauge understanding, but I used this, the first couple minutes to frame up the strategy conversation that I wanted to have. And the strategy conversation I wanted to have was about their corporate crisis management strategy. And then I took them immediately back to the last time I spoke with them and said, okay, in February, I was here in front of you and we talked about the key lessons learned from the tabletop exercise that we ran for you earlier this year. As a reminder, those five key lessons learned were, and I just briefly summarized what they were. Okay, it was this the lack of a corporate crisis management strategy and plan, an accessible, sustainable strategy. And then I took them through the other four lessons learned, again, briefly. And then I pointed out that what we have built here addresses those lessons learned and others that were identified during your strategy review that we helped you with last year. And then I went right into the overview of the corporate crisis management strategy that we've been working on this since January to close the gaps that were identified. And then I re-emphasized that we've reviewed this strategy with many stakeholders across the organization. In fact, we have presented our roadshow 34 times uh, jointly with your team to capture input. And I, I listed a number of teams on the screen. I was clear that this was not comprehensive. But my point in doing this was to demonstrate that we had done our homework that we had aligned this with all the other incident strategies in the organization and headed off the debate that would happen. Well, you know, you didn't talk to InfoSec or you didn't integrate this with our cyber strategy or you clearly didn't integrate this with how our IT team addresses major incidents. Well, no, that's not true because we literally have met with all of these teams along the way. That didn't come up at all in the Q&A. And then from there, I just took them through the strategy. So what, what does the strategy do? All right, here's the major things that this uh, corporate crisis management strategy provides. Now, in order to have a corporate crisis management strategy, we have to have alignment of what it means to have a crisis that is at this level where we need to activate that capability because you're a big company, you have a lot of internal capability for less serious incidents. You manage those well but here's how those strategies connect. And here's the line between letting part of your organization deal with it on their own 
and when this becomes a bigger deal. There was no debate on that definition. This was actually spent a lot of time on this definition in the walk around road shows that we did. And then I took them through some examples. I used some real examples of things that had happened in the past year and how those fit in our view of severity levels. And then I gave them some fictional examples or some upcoming examples for major events locally of how we could use this strategy proactively to prepare for and be prepared to respond. And then I took them into a graphical overview uh, of the crisis management strategy. Like here's how, you know, through the organization at a lower level, here's how these things happen. Here's the escalation, the decision to activate the team and how it's led. And then here's you as the executives and here's the board above you. And some connection points out to um, national and regional partners and connection points inside of the organization. And then I just kind of took them through the roles. Here's your role as an executive team. Here's the role of the um, crisis leader, the incident commander, if you want to use that term. Here's the role of their deputy who has a specific uh, operational role in this environment. Uh, and here are the functions on your corporate crisis management team. And again, big company, lots of different functions at the table. This will be about a 18 to 20 person a crisis management team if everyone is activated and everyone is at the table um, and then how that works we went a little bit into the operational processes of how they would be activated how they would come together how they would work through the battle rhythm of a response and then i talked about our next steps um, and that started with we want to incorporate your feedback into the final strategy and plan Here's how we're going to strategically communicate this across the organization. And then here's how we're going to go about implementing it. And here's the time frame in which you can expect that to happen. And then finally, here's how we're going to practice with exercises in Q4 of this year and Q1 of the coming year. And that was it. And then from there, I provided a really brief update on business continuity. Again, I reminded them of where they had been and where they are going with business continuity. I talked briefly about their new software and the problems this is going to solve for them along with changes we've made in their strategy and what they can expect moving forward. Um, I connected this to some recent uh, events like Change Healthcare and others that were relevant for this particular company and how this helps them be better prepared. I ended where I began, which is what do we need from you? I need your candid feedback on our proposed strategies I need your help to ensure we have the right leaders involved in cross-functional work, and I need your support as this work advances. And then we had about five minutes, seven minutes maybe of Q&A. The questions were great. They were insightful. Um, this group had read the presentation in advance, which is something I encourage you to do, is send that material in advance, which makes it less important that they have to read everything you might be sharing on the screen um, because you want them to listen to you. And they came, they're executives, they came prepared with good questions, which we then talked through. They identified a couple things that uh, stood out to them that they would like us to approach a little differently. Um, but a lot of it was about, I really like the direction this is going. Have you thought about this? Or have you thought about this? Or here's an effort we're doing in my area that I want to make sure is connected. And by the way, every time they brought that up, we could speak to, yes, we actually met with so-and-so from your org. Uh, they brought this up. Here's the ways we see that connecting, but here's some work we still need to do. So that's a little bit about the anatomy of an executive presentation at this level. As I said, um, I think I talked for uh, about 18 to 20 minutes, and then we took, it was about five to seven minutes of Q&A. So I hope this helps you think about how to frame up your own executive conversations. Um, and give you some ideas for how you can go about best representing your program and getting the resources that you need at an executive level. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.